Welcome to this course in dynamical systems. The first question we might want to ask is what is a dynamical system? One way to answer this question is by examples. There are many examples of dynamical systems in nature. Consider the motion of a rock that's thrown in a gravitational field. Consider the motion of a pendulum as it swings back and forth. Or the motion of the planets as they orbit around the sun. The evolution of a weather system as it circles across the globe. Or perhaps the populations of predator and prey in some kind of an ecosystem. The reason we might care about a dynamical system is we might want to know where does the rock land when we throw it? Will the orbits of the planets remain stable as they go around the sun? Is an ecosystem stable or will there be extinction? These are the types of questions that are the focus of dynamical systems theory. Let's now give a more formal definition of what a dynamical system is. A dynamical system will be defined by a set of state variables, x sub i, where i runs from 1 to all the way up to n, where n is a number of variables. And here x sub i could be the position of the particle, population of the i species, or the position of the i planet. So these are the kinds of things that are embodied by state variables. There is also a state space, which is just the set of all variables x i, i equals 1 up to n. And the important feature is the basic equation of motion, or equations of motion. And it's the following x i dot, and here dot means time derivative, is some function f sub i, which could depend on some or all of the other variables x sub j. So this basic equation of motion defines a dynamical system. So it's telling us how the coordinates of our state variables are moving around in state space. So we can think of this uh, equation of motion as telling us where the system flows in state space. A given point in state space tells us what are the variables of the system, and as the system evolves, then this point in state space will move around. And what we're interested in understanding is how this point moves around, and this is what we call flows in state space. Now, this basic equation of motion has a couple of important features that simplify the description uh, considerably. First point, is notice that this equation is first order in time. There's no higher order derivatives. But one thing to point out is that if you had a higher order system, it always can be reducible to first order by an appropriate change of variables. So for example, the rock in a gravitational field, we might think of that as a second order system because it's Newton's law, but it can be reduced to a first order system. So for example, if we had an equation of motion x double dot two time derivatives is equal to some function g of x. To reduce this to first order, we let x dot equals y. And then from this, we get the following equation of motion, x dot equals y. And y dot, which is x double dot, is g of x. So we've reduced a one variable second order equation into a two variable first order system. So in general, higher order systems can always be reduced in this way to a first order system. A consequence of the first order in time is that the state space flow depends only on the current position. And this is just a consequence of the first order in nature of the equation. So the, the subsequent motion depends only on position and nothing else. Another important consequence of the first order nature is that trajectories cannot cross. Imagine the opposite. Suppose that there are two trajectories that happen to cross each other. So at the point where they cross, there are two outgoing directions from a single point, which contradicts the notion that the uh, flow depends only on the current position. So trajectories cannot cross, which simplifies the description because we have kind of a smooth flow pattern without any crossings going on. And another important feature is that the equations are uh, independent of time. And technically, this is what's called autonomous. So if we look at our equations of motion, you see that there's no time on the right-hand side. And so what that means is that whatever picture we have for the flow at one time is the same as any other time. And what this means uh, pictorially is that we're dealing with time-independent 
flows in state space.